I really like compilation CDs because they are a great way to acquire a large variety of music at minimum cost, especially these days when you can find these for a couple bucks each at the thrift store. And instead of having albums which may only have one or two big hits on them, every song on these is a big hit. So you're getting the maximum selection of music on the minimum number of discs. For example, here's a very early one from 1984 when CDs were a very new thing. It's Laser Rock, the best of today's rock as seen through the eye of a laser beam. A good selection of artists on this disc, including Stevie Ray Vaughan, which they misspelled as somebody wrote in the missing A there. And then there's other nice compilations like this Rock On series. They had it all the way from 1960 to 1989 and they came with stickers and in here there's like trivia questions. This one has a bunch of hits from 1969. Moving on to the 70s, you may remember the TV commercials for this the Time Life Sounds of the 70s series. Presenting Sounds of the 70s. All your favorite 70s hits in one fantastic collection. Sounds of the 70s is not sold in stores, so call now. Moving on to the 80s, we have New Wave hits of the 80s. This is from Rhino, and pretty much anything that Rhino put out is very good. And then in the late 90s and early 2000s, I'm sure pretty much everyone remembers these Now CDs. And they're still making new compilation CDs today. This company here, Eric Records, is putting these out today. Hard to find 45s on CD. But I wanted to make this video about the scourge of compilation CD collecting and those are the dreaded re-recordings. These really started to take off in the late 1980s when CDs were becoming very popular but people were growing impatient because the music from the 50s and 60s and 70s was hard to find on CD so there was a big market for that kind of music to be put out on CDs and that's where the re-recordings came in. Here in the early summer 1990 DAC catalog, they have this massive collection of 600 rock and roll hits from the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s. And they talked about how you'll hear them on CDs without the scratches, skips, hiss, and pops of records. And here in the October 1991 Danmark catalog is something very similar. It's the original Golden Oldies set of 30 CDs or tapes. $169.99 for CDs or $79.99 for the cassettes. Bebop to the nostalgic rock and roll hits of the 50s and 60s with the Golden Oldies collection. This complete 30 volume set puts other collections to shame. Due to a special arrangement with the distributor, you can relive the early days of rock and roll at super savings. That may sound like a great deal until you read this special note. It says because some of the original masters were so poor, most of the artists returned to the studios and re-recorded their hits on modern equipment. So in most cases, you'll hear the songs of better fidelity than even the original recordings. And that was the most often stated reason for these re-recordings, because the original recordings were not the best quality, so they wanted to re-record it with the new digital technology of CDs so you can hear all this old music sounding as good as new. Another reason for these re-recordings is that many of these singers did not write their own music so they did not get paid songwriter royalties and once they stopped recording new music and going on concert tours many of them were in financial trouble so basically they needed the money and that's why they did these re-recordings so they could at least get paid for these new recordings and the CD sales from them. But here we are in 1990, and some of these songs are as old as the 1940s, and they claim to be all sung by the original lead singer. So I'm sure you've already thought of the main problem with these re-recordings, and that is, time has not been the kindest to a lot of these singers' voices. Although, to be fair, some of these artists were not the best singers to begin with. Two 
And of course, a group is not just the lead singer. It's the other singers in the band, it's the musicians, it's the production that went to the original recordings. And that is the second big letdown of many of these re-recordings, is the instrumentation. It really does not hold a candle to the original recordings. Take my breath away. And sometimes they try to update the sound of the song until it's nearly unrecognizable. And these CDs like to make a big deal about how the audio quality of the re-recordings are better than the originals, but in reality, the quality of them is often actually worse than a properly restored copy of the original recording. For example, this re-recording of The Game of Love has some pretty bad tape dropouts in it. Come on, baby, let's play the game of love, 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 love. It started long ago. Some of them are actually not that bad. Some of them are very, very close to the original recordings. One thing you have to watch out for is that some of these re-recordings don't put a disclaimer on them saying that they are re-recordings. Or they may try to hide the disclaimer so that you probably won't notice it. And I've been caught by that quite a few times when I've been collecting these compilation CDs over the years. I originally just got rid of those CDs whenever I came across them, but I've wanted to make this video for quite a while, so I've had the opportunity to build up a quite large collection of these re-recordings. So hopefully you'll learn something from this video. When you're looking at compilation CDs, you'll be able to spot these re-recordings so you can avoid them. So the first one here is totally number one hits, UK US single chart. It's a double CD put together by CMC, never heard of them. Nothing on the outside of this indicating that these are re-recordings. Here's the booklet. Let's see if the booklet says anything about it. Nope, that's just a list of the titles and artists and who wrote the songs and what the times are. So this is one of these ones that don't say it at all that these are re-recordings. I did go through all the tracks and marked off the ones which I know to be the original recordings. So about half of the tracks are original recordings, but it would have been nice if they gave some indication that the other half are not. You ain't seen nothing yet. Rhythm and Blues, <laughs> rather generic looking cover. Original artist re-recording, and it, again in German, and they put stars on the ones that are re-recordings, but you can't always trust the list to be accurate if it says which ones are re-recordings or which ones are original. They're not always correct on that. A rainy night in Georgia Lord, I believe it's raining all over the world. This one is still sealed. The original price was $8.82. It was sold by Walmart. It's a four CD set of the best of R&B. But here in small print, all selections are new stereo recordings, except selections marked star are the original recordings. <laughs> Next here is 1972 Top Picks of Legacy Entertainment. Oh here, I like this. To obtain the highest possible quality, some of these tracks have been re-recorded by the original artist or members of the original group. And this one is so cheap it doesn't even have anything printed on the inside of the cover. Yeah, 
Next is the best of Coast to Coast Oldies. Here they have an asterisk, live performance. And that is another thing common with these. Often, instead of re-recordings, they just put live performances, which are not always the best performances they ever gave. And even when you do get some original recordings on these CDs, you're not likely to get the highest quality versions of them. For example, this CD has the lispiest copy of 16 candles I've ever heard. Next here is a three CD set, and that's another common thing with these. You get multiple CDs in one set. Three CDs of the best of R&B hits, new stereo recordings by the original artists. So at least it's saying it around the cover. Here's Surf City, Classic Rock. Here you have to read close. These albums may contain pre-recorded tracks by the original artists. Tracks featuring groups may not include all the original members. So it does say it, but it's rather fine print that's buried with the disclaimers here. Let's go to the hop. Let's go to the hop. Come on. Let's go to the hop. Let's go. Here we have a 60s dance party. Here it says selections marked asterisk are the original recordings. Let's see how many are marked. There's two of them there. So just two out of the 14 tracks are marked as being the original recordings. All other selections are new stereo recordings performed by the original lead singer with one or more members of the original group. This is a pretty early one, 1987. This may have been one of the first CDs to have re-recordings on it. It's my Next is the 60s generation top hits. The cover doesn't say anything much. Just says the copyright year and made in Canada. This is just a single sheet here, just has the track listing. So far, no indication that these are re recordings. So, this is another one that fooled me and it might fool you. Next, we have Soul Love 2 CD set. This one was made in the EU in 2005. Doesn't say anything on the front or back cover about them being re-recordings. Let's look at the liner notes. Nothing indicating that these are re-recordings. Just a list of artists and titles. You have to look very, very closely here at the disc itself. The recordings included are all by the original artists as stated. Original recordings, re-recordings, and live performances may have been used. And remember, these discs would have been sealed when people bought them new. So when you bought this, there would have been no way to tell that these are re-recordings until you already opened it up and happened to notice this disclaimer on the disc itself. Next we have rock and roll hits of the 50s, big hits by the original artists. And that's another thing you have to look out for. It may say original artists, but does not say original recordings. Liner notes here. Doesn't say anything. They have a whole bunch of these. Wow. They sure pumping out those re-recordings. So this one doesn't say anything about them being re-recordings, except if you read between the lines. And notice it only says original artists. It does not say original recordings. And when you finish doing that, Don't talk back. About half the tracks on this CD are the original recordings, which is better than average. But you notice something weird about this CD? It says Hits of the 50s, but it includes Stagger Lee by Tommy Rowe. That's a song from 1971, which is not quite the 1950s. Unforgettable 50s. This is more easy listening crooner style music. But here on the back, the content of this CD may contain some tracks that are live and or re-recorded. How could it be live and re-recorded? If a re-recorded track exists, it is always performed by the feature artiste or one or more of the original group. And this disc takes the prize of the worst CD I've ever owned because there is no audio in the left channel for the entire disc. I tried playing it on several different CD players and it all came out with only audio in the right channel on all of the tracks.
So here's what we're going to do with this CD. That was much more dramatic when I practiced with a CDR, but either way, it's destroyed. And here we have a metal can. Best of Disco Collector's Edition. Two CDs. But here on the front, new stereo recordings by the original artists. You don't normally see CDs in a metal can. British Invasion, 1964 to 1966, U.S. number ones. Doesn't say anything on the cover about them being re-recording, so let's look at the liner notes. Nope, just a list of artists and titles, original chart positions. But again, just like we saw earlier, it has this disclaimer on the disc itself saying that they're by the original artists, original recordings, re-recordings, and live recordings may have been used. Next is 70s Rock Original Artists. Does not say original recordings, just original artists. But here, all selections are new stereo recordings except the selections mark star are the original recordings. I see two of them with stars on them, so two out of 12 may be the original recordings. Here's two discs which just fooled me a couple days ago, which is what really prompted me to make this video after putting together this big collection here. American Diner, 20 tracks, original artists. Nothing in the back in the liner notes. Just a list of songs. Until you read this incredibly teeny tiny print here. Penny product is compiled from a variety of sources for the benefit of the listener including where thought appropriate yeah i'm sure they really thought about this live material due to the age of the source tape on some of the material tape has may be audible where this is an unacceptable level tracks have been replaced with re-recordings by the original artists which use modern recording techniques to ensure maximum listening pleasure Same thing with this Rebel Rouser CD. Again, the only place it tells you that they are re-recordings is this incredibly fine print inside the liner notes, which you wouldn't have seen them until you bought the disc and unwrapped it. And this is one of the discs where some of those live recordings sound like somebody held a microphone up to a TV speaker. I got a Next up is Rhythm and Blues hits, Jukebox hits. Original Artists does not say anything about original recordings. Just a single sheet and a very plain looking label. And I checked the disclaimer around the edge. It doesn't say anything about these being re-recordings. So this is another disc that gives you no indication that it contains re-recordings. Teen Angel Classic Rock. Same kind we've seen before, where it does say it may contain re-recorded tracks by the original artists. Tracks featuring groups may not include the original members. Best of Hits, Take My Breath Away, includes new stereo recordings by the original artists. This one really upset me when I put it in my player and listened to what was on it. Because here it says, original artists, original recordings. No the hell it's not. It just lies to you. Straight up lies to you. It says original recordings. When these are re-recordings on this disc. That's a very plain looking cover. Back to the 60s Volume 4. 12 more hits that shaped the decade. Selection marked star is the original recording. 
Only one? Yeah, there's only one out of 12 that's an original recording. All other selections are new stereo recordings. A fine romance. To obtain the highest possible quality, some tracks are live recordings or have been re-recorded by original artists or one or more members of the original groups. So not necessarily the original lead singer. Hey, too proud to be. Now we have Soul Hits, Forever Gold. The album contains new stereo recordings performed by the original artists. Here's some country music. All selections are new stereo recordings performed by the original artist. This is a KTEL release. So KTEL even got into re-recordings. Here's one, 20 Greatest Hits, 1968. Original artists does not say original recordings. You may think this here is a disclaimer about this being re-recordings, but no. It says, please do not expose the disc to the direct sunlight, the direct sunlight, heat or humidity for a prolonged period of time. For cleaning, wipe the disc with a soft cloth using ethyl alcohol if necessary, please do not use the conventional record cleaner. But so far, no indication that these are re-recordings. Nothing in there. So this one doesn't say anything about these being re-recordings. And I like here on the Grassroots song, it lists the title as Midnight Confession. I guess in the re-recording, they reduced it to just one. And they had a whole series of these from the 60s because I have the 1964 version on a cassette also containing re-recordings. And believe it or not, they also put these on vinyl records. So even some vinyl records contain re-recordings. I have another cassette here, Super 70s. This one is actually on chrome tape, which surprised me. But if you look closely at this J card here, all selections are new stereo recordings. This is the real uh, interesting one here. The Best of Jukebox Rock, 1957. All selections are new stereo recordings performed by the original lead singer with one or more members of the original group. The reason why I point these out, I have another one here which has songs from 1975 on it, is because that's what all this was. This big ad in the DAC catalog. They don't show the CDs on the listing here, but if you look here, the best of Jukebox Rock, that's what these were from. It's in the write-up here by Drew Kaplan, which was the guy who ran deck. He said, some years ago I was in the studio when Jimmy Rogers re-recorded his hit Honeycomb. I have both the original and the re-recorded versions, and to my ears, the re-recorded version sounds much better. This is the one case where I will try to play a short clip of the original, and then compare it with the re-recording. Well, honeycomb, I want you to be my baby. Well, the honeycomb, be my own. What a darn good life when you got a wife like a honeycomb. Well, honeycomb, I want you to be my baby. Well, the honeycomb, be my own. What a darn good life when you got a wife like a honeycomb. And you might think these re-recordings are just a relic of the physical media age, but if anything, it's actually gotten worse when you're trying to find this music online. The re-recordings often seem to greatly outnumber the original recordings. An author at Slate encountered that problem when they were trying to find This Diamond Ring, a number one hit for Gary Lewis from 1965 on YouTube. They kept coming across a re-recording that sounded like it was done in the 1980s. <laughs> So that's just something to look out for when you're going through CDs at a thrift store or even online. You can find many of these on Discogs and they don't make any mention in the Discogs listing of these being re-recordings. Now most of these CDs do contain a few original recordings. Like I showed you may get one or two original recordings out of a dozen re-recordings. So if you really like that one or two songs that are the original recordings 
It may still be worth picking up the CD, especially if it's like a dollar or something. And who knows, like I said, some of these re-recordings are actually not that bad. And honestly, I think a few of them are actually better than the originals. Just not most of them. Most of them suffer from singers whose voices have aged with time. The ones which may not include the original singer at all. And the ones which contain far inferior musicians and production quality compared to the original recordings. You will keep the CD collection in alphabetical order by last name, not first. Do you understand? Oh yeah, perfectly.